We thank you, Lord God. Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to Ministries of Love and Hope Live. Welcome to those who are out there on Facebook Live. Welcome to those who are here and at the church, here at 75 Church in Connecticut. We thank you, Lord God, today that he allows us to be here once again amongst the land of the living. Today I give the Lord God a sacrifice of praise yes. because today for me it was a tough day for me because there were some things that I needed to be able to do. In order for me to do it, I had to look unto the hills from which cometh my help and my hope and strength comes from the Lord. So today I tell you, if you are here looking for someone to help you out, you are in the right place. I come to tell you that there is a living God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who wants to be there for you, who wants to be your ever-present help in a time of need, who wants to give you the joy that you need, the unspeakable joy, the one who wants to give you the peace. All you have to do is reach out for him today and say, Lord Jesus, help me, Lord God. Help me to be all that you call me to be. Today, my beloved, I'm here to tell you that the Lord God said, enter into his course with thanksgiving. Enter into his course with praise. I give a sacrifice of praise today. Today, I know if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? I will be down in the dumps. I will be feeling low and gloom. But I know that there is an awesome God that lives what's inside of me. There is an awesome God that gives me joy and peace. There is an awesome God that gives me happiness. But I have to tell you, brothers and sisters, that happiness is circumstantial. But joy, joy comes from the Lord. It is the joy of the Lord that you need to have today. It is the joy of the Lord that you need to have so that you can make it through this trials and tribulations, so that you can make it through the, the sad times, the happy times, the bad times, the gloom times. It is the Lord God who lives and rules and reigns. So, beloved in Christ, welcome to Ministries of Love and Hope. Welcome into the course today. Enter into his course with thanksgiving. Enter into his course with praise today. Oh, Father, we come today with thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord God. Father, I come with a praise on my lips today, Lord God. Because, Lord God, you help me make it through the day, Lord God. Father, you said in order for me to continue on, there's some things that I need to do, Lord God. So, Father God, as I pray, stand this morning, Lord God. As I got on my spin bike, Lord God. As the pain was going through, Lord God. Father God, you said just keep on going. Stand up for me because you are my healer. You are my keeper. You are my present help. So, Father, I say thank you, Lord God. Touch him, Father, from the crown of his head down yes. to the soles of his feet, Father, and yes. down to the marrows of his bones, Lord God. Use him, Lord God, so that he may speak the words that you called him to speak, Father. And Lord God, I lift up before you, Lord God, the shepherd over this house, Father. Touch him in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Touch him from the crown of his head, Lord God, down to the soles of his feet, Father. Meet him, Father, at his knee point right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, whatever need there is, Lord God, whatever burden there is, Father God, you, Father God, you 
all things by God's strength. Yeah. 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 All things are possible. So, Father, I thank you. I give you praise. I give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yes, I'm going to get the benediction because she already preached. <laughs> but I want to praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I said, I want to praise God. Yeah. yeah. Because y'all don't know. Jesus. 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 What he's done for me. Yeah. 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 You know what he's done for you, but you ain't up here. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Uh, you know, there are times when I don't feel like coming. All right. Like today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, mm, yeah. I said, no, no, it's going to rain. I got to cut my grass. Yeah. You bless me with a lawnmower. I can cut my grass. Yeah. <laughs> I can go and do that. And go watch TV. But I know I have an assignment. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's not dependent upon how I feel. Amen. All right. Amen. What I think. It's only dependent upon me making myself available. Yes. 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 Jesus. Ah. Jesus. Ah. I get tired. I get discouraged. All right. I get frustrated, I get angry. But then I think about the calling on my life. I think about what God has done for me. I think about the sacrifices that He has made for me. All right, all right. I think about when he was on the cross. He didn't have to do that. He could have found another way because he's God. But he did that so that I, you, would not have an excuse. We can't say, oh, God, you can't make to my pain. What? We can't say, God, you can't relate to my sickness. Because he said, by my stripes, you, plural, person, were healed. Has tennis. You can't say, I love, I lost a loved one. Because Yahweh gave his only begotten son. So I'm here. You're here. All right. Yeah. It's been a long week. I'm tired every day in the body and mentally. And the thing is, the subject God had given me was a while ago, and I forgot. I mean, honestly, I said, Lord God, please, I got to preach. All week long, I said, Lord, I, I forgot the topic. So I started making up topics, looking at sermons I had from years ago. Is this it, Lord? It didn't feel right. It didn't feel right. I said, Lord, I, I, I'm sorry. I forgot. I didn't write it down. I'm sorry. What, what? Yesterday at the gym, we came back. Thank God. All right. Mm -hmm. See about that. And it made sense. I got confirmation through a song that Dave was playing. And I won't be before you long enough to say that. Uh, don't give up. Don't ever give up. Ah, there are a lot of scriptures to back that up. Oh, you know what? Ooh. 
pair of glasses so I can see. Uh, when we have Exodus 14, 12 through 14, when the nation of Israel was fleeing from Egypt, they were caught the Red Sea in front of them, Pharaoh's army behind them. They wanted to quit. They could have just simply laid down. They could have simply said, we give up. We'll be your slave. But God spoke through Moses. Mm -mm. Fear not. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians, for your job, for your enemies, you have seen today. You shall see them again no more. All right. Why? 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 Because the Lord shall fight for you, and you, me, shall hold our peace. We all know the story of Job. His wife said, just curse God and die. Just tap out. Just quit. He didn't. Now, we're all familiar with those heroes of the Bible. But since it was so long ago, since we don't know anybody that was around, it's hard to relate to those stories. We know the truth. But it happened so long ago. That, and I will admit, but sometimes it's, it's a story. I know it's true, but I can't grasp it. I can't hold on to it. There's, there's no meat on a bone because it's, 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 it happens. So I can't ask anybody. Do you know somebody who's there? No. But if you think about it, We all know somebody in our lives that didn't give up, that never gave up. We can start with a Dr. Maya Angelou, a Dr. Martin Luther King, Fannie Lou Hamer. We can, we can talk because we know people that may have met these people. We've heard these people talk. So I can relate to that. But even so, even so, I didn't go through that. Meaning, I didn't march on Washington. I didn't march across the bridge and out of that. I didn't, I didn't, I was not around to do that. I am grateful that they did, but I didn't do that. I didn't feel that pain from the fire hoses. I didn't feel the pain from the police. Officers. I didn't feel the pain from the batons of the police. I didn't feel the embarrassment when they were told to get out of here because we don't serve people who look like you. It makes me angry, but I'm not that type of angry where you know person. And that's the difference between sympathy and empathy. I sympathize, but I can't empathize because I don't know the personal pain. I do know they did not give up. Now, to bring it even closer, we know people to hear. Elder Elliot, the 
Evangelist Maria. They, they didn't they didn't give up. They didn't give up. They fought. They praised God until they went home. I can relate to that. I saw that with my own eyes. I heard it with my own ears. So it makes more of an impact as opposed to reading about it in a book. But even then, it can get closer. If you look at your life, I'll use my wife as an example, her hip. Now, as a husband of almost 30 years, every husband can attest to the fact that they don't want to see the wife in pain. And they can't do nothing about it other than pray and stand in agreement. No good husband, I should say. No godly husband. No, you know what? Not even a godly. No good husband wants to see his wife in pain. So what I can say is this. She hasn't given up. She hasn't tapped out. Every day I, I see the grimace on her face. The strain in her voice. Knowing that I'm not God. But I petition God every day. I said, Lord, she is born in your bone flesh of your flesh. She ain't not given up. She declares she is healed. Every day. How much longer? Because it's already been too long. But here we are. Here she is. Physically here. She could have given up, said, no. I'm not going in today, Shay. But not only did she come in, she brought her dad with her. Think about yourself. I know for me, this finger is my middle finger. It's, it's, it's messed up for some reason. And you don't notice the fingers in your hand until one hurts. Because you take it for granted. My shoulder. Just to get it, to stretch it, it makes me nauseous because it hurts so much. I want to give up. I'm like, no, listen, just fix it. I know you can. I know it's healed. Why do I have to do these exercises? Well, the reason is, there's somebody else out there in the same situation who wants to quit. And if you allowed me to quit, I would not be able to testify to the goodness of God. I would not be able to empathize with somebody with this particular shoulder injury. They'd be sympathetic. Oh, man, I'm, I feel so bad for you. Whereas we'll do, I know. Yep, right here. Yep, I know. It's, yes. There's a difference. Now, the title, most sports people remember, who said, don't give up, don't ever give up. I like that guy. They called him Jimmy B. Jimmy Bobbiner. He was the head coach of North Carolina State. They beat Houston, uh, I think in 83. Was it 83? Yep. NCAA championship. And I remember him running across the floor, excited, because they were the underdogs, they won by two points. Fast forward to 10 years, 1993. I urge you, <clears throat> excuse me, to look up 
the speech. Because each time I listen to his speech now, this guy, his body is racked with, 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 with cancer, stricken with cancer. He knew he was dying. Stage four. What he said in this speech, he said a lot of things. But he said three things you do every day. Number one, he said, is laugh. Number two, he said, is to, to think. He said, spend some time in thought. He said, number three, you should have your emotions move you to tears. And I guarantee you, if you watch this, look it up on YouTube, Jimmy Lovato speech, it'll, it'll come. I guarantee you, you laugh, you cry, you think. Because he was a man dying. And he's telling us, don't give up. Don't ever give up, no matter the circumstances. God is still God. Yeah. No matter how I feel, no matter what phone call I get about my mother, God is still God. No matter how high my blood sugar is or how low it goes, no matter if I pass out, God is still God. I said, I won't keep you long. Just one more thought. Another name I'm going to share with you. His name is Derek Richmond. Derek Richmond. And this will affect everybody, but in dads in particular. His son was a track, I mean, Derek was a track star. Olympic caliber track. He had medals, gold medals, silver medals. He ran a 400 meter race. And a 4x4 as well. For England. And this is what happened. He was running a race. Four by four hundred, no, four hundred for the gold medal. Two hundred meters in, his hamstring rips apart, and with a hamstring injury, when the tear is like a um, what do you call it? Like a um, it, it rolls up, so it rolls up and then it separates, through, like shut, it just rolls up. So he falls down. And he starts to cry. And he gets up. And he tries to, to finish the race. And he falls down. He's thinking, I trained 18 years to run 15 seconds. And it's taken from me. Ah. But before I tell you what happens, let me read this scripture here. Matthew 26, 42. The garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane. Once more, Jesus went away and prayed. My father, if this cup of suffering cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. Your will be done. And we all know after he was on the cross where his father had to separate himself because of sin. Not his sin, mind you. Our, my sin. My sin. Which was the saddest moment of his life. Of y'all. 
he had never been separated from his son. But on the cross, Jesus called our Father. Abba Father. Imagine your child calling you. You have the power to stop the suffering. But because of your promise to an ungrateful people, you can't do it. You have to watch your only begotten son. can't imagine that. And neither could Derek Richmond Bob. Because as he went down, Derek's, you can see it in the stands if you look at the video. He's made, security guards are trying to stop it. I will give you a suggestion. Don't you ever get in the way of a dad trying to get you a son that's injured because it won't end well for you. I promise you. And he's moving security guards out the way. Y'all be off. And he goes down to his son. Where's son? He meets him. Now get this now. He meets him where he is. He didn't ask his son to come up to where he was. Don't forget me. The father came down like this. To pick him up. Okay? That's where he was. The father met him at his knee point. Whether for you or for me, that's alcoholism, drug addiction, lying, stealing. God the Father will meet you there. So, so Derek's dad went down to pick him up. And I swear to God, watch the video. And he, he, they hobbled. But he crossed the finish line. If it weren't for the Father, Derek, who was disqualified all that, if he had just been on his knees crying, because he was, you'll see, he's crying like a baby. And he even had the stretchers out together. Man. Just saw the wave away. No, no. That's my son. I got this. I was built for this. And he powers the last 150 meters to the finish line. And 65,000 people were going. Because they saw the love of the Father that they had never seen before. They had read stories about the love of the Father, but they were able to see it. Whether they were atheists, Buddhists, did not matter. They all stood and saw the love of the Father. There's a story years ago, years ago, happened in Lake Michigan, where an older father and young son, which I never understood, because my kids, I had my kids young. I mean, some men, we all, we've seen men have them in their 60s, 70 years, 80 even. And I don't mean in the Bible, I mean, as we know. So this guy, older father, took his son fishing, Lake Michigan. And water's got rough. Got rough. And their boat capsized. So there was some, some, the water's got choppy. It was taking the sun further and further away from. So, the 
father tried to find him. But before he said, listen, he said, son, oh, no, his son got onto a buoy. He said, son, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. He said, but you just hold on. And I'll be back. So the old man goes, there's a coast guard. The coast guard comes out. But they keep circling because he wasn't that buoy anymore. So they go wide, you know. So the circle gets wider and wider and wider. And then they, then they hear hmm, a boy's voice singing. And they were all amazed except for the father. So when they rescued the boy, they asked the boy, how were you able to hang on? How come he didn't just give up? And the boy said, because my father said, he will come for me. Beloved, it does not matter what you're doing. It does not matter if you're a drug dealer. It does not matter if you're a drug addict. If you are greedy. Matter of fact, it's in us. If God raised you from the dead, wherever you are, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, God has proven time and time again, He will get to you. You don't have to clean yourself up. I talked to, uh, well, I don't want to say his name, but one of my members is uh, his brother in law. And his, and, his, and his niece. And I was talking to them. I said, come on. Come on. Let's come on to the church. He said, well, no, no. I got I to clean. I'm, I'm, I'm drunk. You know, I got I to clean myself up. Just come as you are. Well, no, no. I was, I was taught that you got to come clean. And his niece said, she had, you know, tight short. Just come as you are. Well, no. My grandmother said I got to have a dress down to my knees. Just come as you are. What did God say? It? I wasn't dressed like this when Came my life to the room. And if I would, it wouldn't matter what I, I could have been butt naked. I'm just going to make a plan. I could have been butt naked. And if I had this call on God, he would have come. Give you another example. I'm sorry. I, I, but this is just in me. It's, 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 it's hitting me. Don't give up. Keep talking about this. Yeah, diabetes since 1973. I remember like it was yesterday, going to the hospital, sitting by my mom, stumped in a chair because I feel horrible. Four years old. I remember going upstairs, putting me on this table. Had an IV in his arm right here. A big old fashioned one, because I used to use it. Those you use as a skateboard, which we did as kids. They were good, just in the seven. They were well built. But I remember that like it was yesterday. I remember rocking it back and forth in my bed because my body hurt. I was a little kid. It hurt. It hurt. It hurt. I recall. Because I told you my grandmother prayed for me. I was not a believer. She definitely was. I recall praying for myself. Quoting scriptures. I said, God, you said, you said, you said this. You cannot lie. I believe it right now. I believe it so it should happen right now. In my timing, not yours. This is what the word says. It's past tense. By my stripes, you were me. I. That was 30 years ago. I took a shot this morning. But I'm not going to give up. Because I have a job to do. And I declare, as I do all the time, I am healed. I don't care what the blood test said. 
I don't care what the doctor, I don't care how he feels. I am standing on the promises of Father God. That's all I know to do now. I know nothing else works. It could be a temporary fix. But I want an eternal solution. Which, that's where God is. The story of uh, the three Hebrew boys. Someone said that God had a conversation in heaven saying, okay, somebody needs to get there. He asked Gabriel, Gabriel, how fast can you get there? Oh, I can get there in, in 20 seconds. No, it's going to take too long. Michael, how fast can you get there? I can get there in five seconds. No, it's going to take too long. And he said, why don't you go? He said, I'm already there. And that's when it's all four. Not three. That's God. He's already there. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're about to go through, He's already there. See, see, listen, 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 listen to this. You, He can't be God if He's in time. That's why He's God. He can't be God if He's in the universe. He made the universe. You can't build something if you wouldn't. He otherwise he wouldn't be God. Time and space does not matter to him. Listen, he is faster than light. He is putting in power. And knowing that I ain't quitting. I ain't tapping out. I've gone through too much. Training. Boot camp. I've seen too much. I've been delivered from too much. And I know I'm not the only one. I know for a fact I'm not the only one. I understand. Should have been, at the very least, blinded on dialysis, no finger, no limbs. At the very least, you can ask Melissa what I used to do when I met her. One example, she said, Listen, I used to like hot tamales. Halloween time, she had a big bowl of hot tamales. I took it all, the whole bowl, a punch bowl, ate it myself. My sugar should have been over a thousand. Next morning, my sugar was 60. There's no science that can explain that. Only God. And the thing was, see, as I said before, in my healing, in my confession, there was an arrogance. That's why I did it, because I knew I was here. Yeah, I ate stuff I should not have eaten. Because in my arrogance, I'm healed. Not realizing I was tempting God. But God's mercy and his grace was sufficient. Because he knew where I was mentally and emotionally and spiritually. He knew I was bragging on him. I mean, I don't want to imagine hearing a conversation between God and Satan that he says, have you thought about my servant chant? Like what? No. Because if we hear those conversations, we go, no, no, I don't want any part of it. Because if you told me I had to go through what I went through to get to where I am today, nope. Nope. Would not have done it. Would not have wanted to do it. There's too much pain involved. No. The sanctified pain. God. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. See, my life, your life, is a testimony for everyone else. And and I give you another example. My friend Mike, I told you all about. We used to work together at ING, down in Hartford. 
you know, I, I ran my battle much time. I, you know, a lot of things I did that which you are supposed to do if you're a Christian. And Mike tells me, this is, God, this is what Miles even born. This is a long time ago. So Mike tells me recently, Chad, I was watching you. I didn't know. So I saw you, Chad, reading the Bible. The first time people said, don't mess with Chad when you're reading the Bible. I, I watched you, Chad. I watched how you carried yourself. I watched how you wore your suspenders and slacks. I watched you, Chad. I didn't know. I was watching him, actually. But I didn't know he was watching me. He said, Chad, Chad, you don't know how much of an influence you had on my life. I had no idea. Beloved, but just imagine what would have happened to Mike had I given up. If I said, you know what? Heck with all this. Heck with all that. And I said that, not realizing that Mike was watching. So I'll say it again. Not necessarily for your sake, but for the sake of others who are watching. When I say a word, don't give up. Don't ever give up. That's the end of the message. I will pray first. I said, Lord, lead me. Father God, in the name of Christ, Jesus, Pray, Father God, that your word touched people like it touched me because I had no idea what you were going to say. I pray, Father God, that people get strengthened and encouraged. I pray, Father God, that the endurance will increase. I pray, Father God, that they would take their eyes off of the circumstances and put their eyes on you. Father God, <clears throat> Any and everyone under the sound of my voice, if they have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, Father God, they come as they are and ask for forgiveness, repent, and seek the face of the Jesus. I pray, Father God, that they know they will not be condemned. Pray, Father God, that they will come, Father, to surrender. I pray, Father God, for those that might have turned their back toward the Lord will turn their back to the Lord and do what the Lord said to do. I pray, Father God, that they will complete their assignment in the name of Christ and Jesus. I pray, Father God, that you will give us peace. I pray for peace in the homes. Peace for the jobs. I pray for peace in every person's life under the sound of my voice. In the name of Christ Jesus. And I pray, Father God, that you be glorified from this day forward by what we say and by what we do. In the name of Christ Jesus. Amen.